I was conducting this analysis on the valuations of the current tech stocks and I had this really interesting conclusion that I found that I have not seen anyone else talking about on the internet. So I was comparing the current valuation multiples of the AI stocks to the valuation multiples of the tech stocks back around the year 2000 uh, during the dot-com tech bubble. And I was going to see if we could make any sort of conclusions or draw any comparisons because if we saw similar valuation multiples, perhaps we could say that uh, maybe these tech stocks are overvalued now, these AI tech stocks, um, in a way that the dot-com tech stocks were overvalued back around 2000. And one thing I found is that NVIDIA has a particular popular valuation multiple that is currently higher and higher is bad, so worse than any of the dot-com stocks in my whole data set uh, back from 2000. I conducted this analysis in uh, data lore, so shout out to JetBrains for great software there. Um, and I connected to Tingo API, their fundamental data API, in order to retrieve this data. So historical valuation metrics are really hard to find on the internet, so this is one of the one places I could pull them in in Python. Now don't worry too much if you don't know Python, I'm really just gonna focus on showing you guys the results. So in this section, I'm retrieving, retrieving the NASDAQ adjusted close prices, and I wanted to basically just show you guys how um, severe this tech bubble collapse was around the year 2000. So this is going to show us the uh, peak of the bubble happened just after the year 2000 right here, and the price was about uh, $93 or so, and it bottomed out all the way about two and a half years later at under $20. And so what this represents is an 81% drop in the NASDAQ over just a two and a half year period of time, uh, which is absolutely incredible. So the question of this analysis is, um, how are the valuations now versus then? Because obviously at this time, the valuations had been too high. People were too optimistic. So uh, let's dive in. So in this part, I wanted to look at Microsoft's uh, valuation metrics basically because this was a company that was a major player back in the uh, tech bubble way back in the 90s and continues to be a major player in the AI uh, market right now because they have a partial equity ownership stake in OpenAI, the company that created uh, ChatGPT. So I thought that they would be a good company to look at for that purpose. So we're gonna take a look at Microsoft's price to earnings ratio and their price to book ratio. I'm going to quickly go over the two valuation multiples that we will be focusing on in this video, just so you guys are up to speed on what I'm talking about in case you don't already know. So the first one is the price to earnings ratio or the PE ratio. Now, this is defined as uh, it measures a company's uh, share price relative to its earnings per share. So if we look at the formula for this one, it says PE ratio equals market price per share divided by earnings per share. So it is preferable to have a lower PE ratio because you pay a lower price per the amount of earnings that you receive per share. So a company that has a very high PE ratio Value investors might make the argument that the company is overvalued because for the price you're paying, you're not receiving enough earnings. And we'll get into more about why price earnings ratios might be higher or lower. Um, and the second ratio is the price to book ratio, otherwise known as the PB ratio. This is defined as uh, it compares a company's market value to its book value. The formula for this is that the PB ratio equals market price per share divided by book value per share. And so the book value is really just an accounting measure of what are the value of the assets on the company's books or on the balance sheet. And so someone might say that a PB ratio that is greater than one means that the price of the company exceeds the book value of its assets and so that company should be overvalued. Whereas if the PB ratio is less than one, 
That means that you can pay a lower price than the book value of the company's assets and that uh, that company is undervalued. So it's better to have a lower PB ratio. But uh, tech stocks generally have higher price to book ratios because of higher assumed growth. But anyways, let's dive into it. I'll talk more about it, but now you know the basics. Now that we have a better understanding of what a price to book ratio or price to earnings ratio is, let's dive into a graph where we look at Microsoft's uh, value for both of these ratios from 1995 to the present. So I think this one's pretty interesting. So the first one here, this is Microsoft's PE ratio. And you can see down here, we start back in 1995 and we go all the way uh, till today in uh, 2024. And we can see that during that dot-com bubble around the year 2000, this uh, PE ratio got all the way up between basically 55 and 70 when those peak valuations were occurring. And then it, the, the bubble sort of popped and you can see that these valuations really taper off and they get all the way down to sort of their lowest value after the great financial crisis down to 10. So the price is $10 for every $1 of earnings per share. And then uh, it, it has this recovery, jumps back up, and then we can see that once we get back to now into this sort of uh, AI boom period, now the PA ratios are getting to around uh, 35 to 40 or so. So these are rather high PE ratios, although it's still quite a bit below what we saw in the uh, tech bubble burst. So I would say that investors are being a little bit more reasonable and rational right now for sure than they were back uh, during the tech bubble. Now let's look at the Microsoft price to book ratio. Um, so we'll see same graph from basically 1995 all the way till now. We'll see the highest this price to book ratio got was hovering between like 15 and 18 for that whole tech bubble period. Then it burst and it was basically down to around uh, three or four after the great financial crisis. And now it's actually making a, a big comeback after the, uh, the AI boom, uh, but it's still not exactly where it was in the dot-com era. So we're sitting at around uh, 13 price to book ratio. So you could say the Microsoft investors are still a bit more rational right now than they might've been in the tech bubble, or at least in the tech bubble, they might've been pricing in more growth back then than they're pricing in currently uh, right now, but we do see that this price to book ratio is rising quite a bit. The next thing we're going to look at is the price to book ratios and price to earnings ratios of the dot com era companies. And so, one limitation of my data set is that I had to use uh, companies that currently exist today. So, I couldn't include the ones that had already failed because they weren't in the data set. So, let's keep that in mind. But so, we're going to be looking at Cisco, Oracle. Adobe, Verizon, Broadcom, uh, Dell, Intel, and IBM from 1998 to 2001. So let's take a look at these. So this right here is the PE ratios of all these companies. You can see the key from 1998 all the way to 2000 and the end of 2001, basically. So the start of 2002. And we can see that some of these got absolutely ridiculous, like Cisco Systems, got up around 200, which is practically unheard of. Uh, a lot of these were quite high. Oracle sitting above 100, and then a bunch of these other ones are hovering around or above 50 for most of the time. Uh, now let's look at the price to book ratios. So the price to book ratios shows us that Oracle kind of broke the chart and their price to book ratio around 2000 almost peaked to upwards of nearly 60. Uh, which is quite high and uh, Adobe's went very high as well in between the 20s and 30s as well as the uh, Cisco systems. So now that we've seen these values for the dot-com era companies, why don't we take a look at the current AI companies? For the AI era companies, we're going to be looking at NVIDIA, Google, Microsoft, Amazon, Tesla, Arm, Meta, Intel, and AMD. So a lot of chip manufacturers and then the uh, standard FANG companies as well. So let's take a look at these results. So I had to cap this PE ratio at 200 because some of them were so high that it broke the whole scale. And you'll see that uh, during the uh, 2003 
a lot of them spiked up above 200, which is an absolutely ridiculous PE ratio. But then they come down when they report their second quarterly earnings. Like you'll see uh, Amazon comes down, uh, Nvidia comes down. So basically what was happening was the price was going up a lot because uh, people in the market, investors were projecting in a lot of growth. So the price kept rising, but the earnings only really updates uh, at the quarterly earnings report. So that explosion of the growth in the AI companies was happening in the second quarter of Q3. And then at the end of that quarter, they reported their earnings, which were extremely high compared to the, uh, the period of time before, which made the denominator of that PE equation a lot higher, which made the value fall. So now they uh, fell and then they kept falling. And so you'll see now these PE ratios can be quite high. So like a 75 PE ratio is generally thought of as extremely high, but they're nothing like they were last year. Um, and the thing is, when you have a very high PE ratio, it's because people are projecting in high amounts of growth into the future. And investors were generally correct about projecting that growth in in the future back in 2003. Now, will that continue to be the case? Because for these super high PE ratios that NVIDIA and Blue has, uh, Tesla and Pink has, and Amazon and Red has, these companies need to have very rapid growth to justify PE ratios that are actually above 50. And so of all these, one interesting thing that stands out is that NVIDIA's PE ratio is quite a bit higher than all the other ones, but that generally reflects that the market thinks that NVIDIA is going to grow by a lot more than all these other companies. So this is the gamble. Will NVIDIA have this, continue to have this historic growth that justifies a current PE ratio of 75? That's the question. Now, let's look at what is more interesting to me is the price to book ratios. So we can see that these price to book ratios uh, actually got, are, are seemingly more reasonable for most of them. Uh, we'll see that all of them are hovering basically between uh, 13 and five for all the other companies on this list, except for NVIDIA is up there in the 60s. That means that the current valuation, the market price per share is more than 60 times higher than the accounting or book value per share. Now let's compare these values to the values of the companies in the dot-com bubble. So now in the next graphs, I'm actually going to overlay the PE ratios here of both the dot-com era companies and the AI era companies. So remember the uh, the dot-com era companies, we basically had like a thousand day sample that started at the beginning of 1998 and went from all the way to there. Uh, the, the AI era companies, we've had a thousand day sample that started sort of in the middle of 2020 and went till present day. So we're just going to have this axis as the days into the analysis period. And so we're just overlaying the two things. So the light blue lines are the AI era companies except NVIDIA. The dark or the light orange lines are the dot-com era companies. And then the dark blue line is NVIDIA. So to me, there's a whole lot of noise. It's hard to make sense out of a lot of this. Um, the main thing is that uh, some of those PE ratios in the middle of the dot-com bubble, these orange ones are way higher than any of the current uh, AI era companies. So the AI era companies' current PE ratios are actually closer to the dot-com uh, companies after the bubble already burst. So this would be a good sign to show that perhaps the AI era companies are being uh, valuated more modestly now than companies were during the boom of the dot-com era, right? So they're sort of priced like the dot-com companies after the bubble already burst, which is a good sign for people that have invested in the AI companies right now. However, the more interesting graph to me is the comparison between the price to book ratios. So if we look at the same graph with the days into the analysis period as the horizontal axis, we can see dark blue once again is Nvidia and Nvidia's current price to book ratio is higher than every single dot-com era company 
in the peak of the bubble in my entire data set. Now, to me, that is pretty astounding. So the price that the market is pricing in for NVIDIA right now assumes a level of growth that essentially goes beyond the expectations of growth for the tech bubble companies at the height of that bubble. Now, what to make of that? It's hard to say. NVIDIA truly does have a unique business model. AI is beginning. AI is absolutely incredible. Generative AI is one of the most cool tools I've ever seen in my entire life. It helped me to write the code to make all the analysis possible that I've done here. Um, but is NVIDIA going to grow uh, more so than all these other companies by this magnitude? That is a uh, difficult gamble to make, and it's not one that I'm going to speculate on. I just wanted to show you guys what the numbers say that the price to book ratio of NVIDIA right now is higher than the peak of all the dot-com era companies in my data set. Absolutely uh, incredible. And what you guys make of that, uh, that is for you to decide, can NVIDIA grow that much? Um, I'm not the expert to say that but uh, I think it is a pretty crazy finding. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I'm gonna have an article that actually fleshes out my thoughts on this topic in a lot more detail that I will link uh, into in the description if you're interested. So uh, thank you for watching this video and subscribe for more content just like it. Mm -hmm.